Connector, or should I call you Karnak? Yeah, Today we're going to discuss Hector the Connector's internet marketing predictions for 2017 and beyond. Yeah. You know, it's really crazy. I've been doing this kind of article now for about five years. And the way I do it is sort of back experts, if right. you will. In other words, what I do is I write the article, and then I do the research. Right. And I do that because I don't want to skew mm -hmm. my ideas mm -hmm. directly from the, the sure. research. Now, I'm doing research all the time. Mm -hmm. So you see trends and things like sure. that. So that's that's not uncommon. But um, I try and make it so that these are things that I think might happen. Right. And what's been pretty cool is I'm usually not far out there because, again, if you're doing research all the time, you see these trends. And it makes it relatively easy to predict short-term things. Now, when I say short-term, a lot of times I'll predict that it's going to happen this year. Right. And it ends up happening next right. year. Right. Absolutely. Mean, that's, that's pretty common. Um, but, you know, it's still a lot of fun to do this kind of stuff. And it's also cool because if you see a trend coming before it happens, you, you really have a big advantage. For example, we were doing mobile sites mm -hmm. in 2012, right. 2011, 2012, and now you've got to have them. Right. Okay? That's not an option anymore. Right. So, you know, that's, a, that's the big deal I think that people ought to think about when they're looking at these articles. Um, there are lots of um, prediction articles in the notes mm -hmm. section of the, of the blog also if they want to look at those there too. Um, before we get into all that, though, we want to give out the call-in number for all our listeners out there. Both yeah, both of them. It's 213-943-3808. That's 213-943-3808. Of course, if you call in and ask any kind of questions, we'll get we'll let you, you know, post your out your website out there. Have your you know. 60 seconds of fame. Right. And also, if you want to find us a different way, you can go to workinthewebwin.com. There you'll find links to Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Google+. YouTube, Pinterest, Instagram, and all those other kinds of things. So, um, we want to thank Vibrant Life Health Center for being our host, our, our sponsor, sponsor all year. Mm -hmm. uh, they have their own show comes out on Thursdays. Mm -hmm. uh, really great show. If you really are into natural health and natural healing and all that kind of stuff, chiropractic and natural weight loss, yep, this the, show really has lots of. They're the bomb, stuff. right? They're yeah. the bomb. I mean, they get some really cool stuff, and they tell you the way it is. I mean, if, if he's talking about supplements, all that kind of stuff, well. You have to realize too that you know most people they think they know something about natural health supplements, right. but I mean this is a doctor. Right, he's a doctor. So he definitely there. knows. Because right. I mean I've learned a few things from him that I, I was not aware of, and right. I've added them on my repertoire just by shooting the show. Right. So <laughs> it's it's really it. he's it's in really it. a yeah. great thing to, to listen to him because he knows his stuff, yeah. and and yeah. again I consider myself to be fairly expert in natural stuff, and I go to him. Right. Okay. Because he he does know the bomb. He's he's the guy. Um, today we're talking about you know. The future predictions for 2017 and beyond, and the first one I wanted to talk about to me is sort of a no-brainer, unless you're a lefty, mm -hmm. okay? And that's that the internet's going to boom. Right. And one of the reasons it's going to boom is I really believe the economy is going to take off. Mm -hmm. And it may not be like a, a liftoff or anything right. like that, but I'm pretty sure it's going to take off. But there's another reason that I make this prediction. A lot of people have been holding back for a very long time. Now the reason I can make this prediction is mm -hmm. I see people bring us their websites. And they're like old, yeah. 10 years old type yeah. stuff. Right. You know? Like and the reality, fossilized. Yeah. And, <laughs> and the reality is if you haven't been updating your website on a regular basis, at least once every three years, mm -hmm. you're way behind the time. Even if you had built a mobile site in 2012, mm -hmm. you really had to change it to HTML5 to right. really take advantage of all the new cool stuff. And that really didn't start happening until about 2014, something like that. Because yeah, so. you no longer need a Mobi site. You're right. using dynamic right. You know, right. internet. You can just, it'll, it'll automatically reconfigure It's much better to itself. have a dynamic site than have a two or three different sites right. and all that kind of stuff. And as people start changing, that's going to you know, increase the amount of you know, things that you can do on the internet. But e-commerce is a lot easier to do on oh, the yeah. internet today. Uh, you can do it on a lot of different places. Streaming video. It's not super easy. I mean, what's really easy is off your phone. Right. If you want to do stream and video show off your phone, that's super easy. Doing it from computers and stuff like that's a little more tricky because you've got to have special software and those kinds of things. But again, the Internet's going to boom. There's no doubt about it. If you looked at the precursor for the, for the trend, mm -hmm. was well, Christmas buying this year. Right. You know, record, record sales on the Internet. And even with the economy in the toilet, the record mm -hmm. sales. Okay. So that's going to be my first prediction there, that I think it's sort of a no-brainer, but it's going to happen in a big way. And if you're sitting on the sidelines, maybe it's time to get off the sidelines and take advantage of some of these yeah, things. Get into the game, folks. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, last year I made a prediction about can't program- win it if you're not in it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> last year I made a prediction about programmatics and people were saying program what? You know. And programmatics is like an automated buy sell mm -hmm. media buy type right. application. I mean, actually, there's lots of applications out there, and these things are going to be growing trends. They were growing last year. Still, only mainly big players are using them. Mm -hmm. The technology is seeping into things like, it's not in AdWords yet, but it's becoming more of a mm -hmm. type of thing. I always notice in AdWords that it automatically keeps jacking up the, the, the cost per clicks, like two right. or three cents almost every day. Mm -hmm. You know, That's not quite what this is, but as it does creep into stuff, more and more people are going to be using it because people don't want to pay attention to marketing. Sure. They just want it to sort of automatically they want it to work. work for them. Yeah. Right. <laughs> just make it work. Now, now the, the trick part is that the more automated something is, the more somebody can monkey with it. Right. Okay? And that's really the part of the problem. And not only that, automation, the, the levels of sophistication and automation that we have today oh, yeah. it's way is out there. not just like saying if then else. Right. It's like, if then, oh, maybe I want to try this. The software has sort of its own mind type of stuff. Yeah, yeah well, that's the thing. AI is in everything right. now. You know, I mean, uh, I see, because you actually have the dot, and, and, right. and you've, you've right. given me your girlfriend, Echo. No, she's, I've got Alexa. Um, but the point is, is that, that they've got, they're using that fire, fire, oh. the fire stick that they right. use for the uh, it's TV. It's the fire stick. It's yeah. it. If you go to my house, we'll have Xfinity. Yeah. I can get the remote control right. and talk, talk to, to it, and it, it goes finds the, the, the shows for me yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So, so I mean, my wife actually has that one. I don't get to use that one that much, but yeah. it's 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 in there. And again, if you have Windows 10 and you have Cortana fully turned on, it's listening to you all the time. Right. <laughs> um, you know, so there's a lot of high-end intelligence, and we're moving from programmatics into the next piece that we're talking about, which is artificial intelligence is going to be in everything. And mm -hmm. on top of that. It was the big seller this year. I mean, mm -hmm. Echo's been around for three years, but this year it sold like hotcakes. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah, well, now they have the dot. Well, first of all, the price has dropped. Right, the price has dropped a little bit. Not even a lot. Echo was a lot. I mean, uh, the right. Echo was even less than well, I think it was like three hundred dollars a year ago. It was like half that this year. Yeah, it was like one eighty, one one hundred eighty dollars, mm -hmm. one hundred seventy nine dollars, and it was right. originally three hundred, right. and then it became one ninety nine, and now it's continuing to drop. The dots, which I bought a couple of those guys, uh, they were like on sale. For Black Friday, $29. There you go. Now, it doesn't sound as good as the Echo, right. but it's got a good speaker enough to do in it. And it's a second generation device, so it's got all the smarts. Mm -hmm. uh, it just doesn't have all the cool speaker stuff, and I'll get a speaker thing for it. But, you know, Google jumped into the fray. Yep. With they Google have, Home. Of course, they have okay. to have, if, if Facebook has one, Google oh, has right, to right. have one. And you could bet that before long, there's going to be several of these copycat devices. Because, yeah. again, Microsoft ain't going to stand by. I mean, they're going to want to try and do it with their computer, right? You know, and the phone and all the other kind of stuff right. because they have a they're going towards a uniform type of device. Mm -hmm. But before long, they'll have their own homey, homey device there, and Facebook will be jumping into the thing and IBM yeah. and everybody and their brother. Of course, the, the the big problem is with new technology. You've also got the problem of hacking. All right, and a lot of these new devices. I mean, the only protection you have for your Amazon Echo is that they don't hack your phone. Right. If they hack your phone, they have access to your Echo. Mm -hmm. And if they have access to your Echo, they can set it up to go buy stuff on Amazon. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, and, and, and like, like a lot of the other, because a, like, like, a lot of these smart TVs and the smart appliances, right. I mean, a lot of them have little or no protection at all right. from hacking. If they get in there, they get into your wire, your Wi-Fi network, and right. they've got access to everything. Right. And here's the thing. I'm pretty sure that these guys who are making all this artificial intelligence stuff, mm -hmm. their next step is to sell that technology mm -hmm. to all these other devices. Mm -hmm. So that you can get your Samsung TV with smart stuff built in and all that kind of stuff. And of course, Samsung has sm smart pay, mm -hmm. you know, and Google has their smart pay and all that. You know, if they don't start stepping up and adding security as the, the first layer yeah. of design, yeah. this is gonna be a huge problem. Oh yeah, well I told you too, like, like a lot of the new cars, that you can actually access them with your smartphone. So yeah. they said, do you want to add that? It's like, no. Because yeah. <laughs> like, you're just asking to be hacked, right. you know? Oh, yes, please, let somebody turn my car yeah. on remotely while I'm not in it. Thank you. Yeah. And one of the predictions about the artificial intelligence stuff is that next year will be a hack fest. Mm -hmm. I mean, every year since 2011, right. when we started writing articles, we've been talking and warning people about hacking 
And guess what? Every year it's gone up two, three, four hundred percent. Yeah. So you think? So now it's ep epidemic. So instead of the big Mac attack, this year's gonna be the big hack attack. Right. It's gonna be the big hack attack. And I, my major prediction for hacks is that one of the big social media giants is gonna get whacked. Mm -hmm. I mean, last year, this year, twenty sixteen, Yahoo got hit. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I bet you one of the big players, probably Twitter or somebody's, because mm -hmm. Twitter gets all the social media places get hacked. Sure. Zuckerberg has been hacked. I don't right. know how many times. So they all get hacked, but a major hack where they're going to suck down a bunch of username and passwords and stuff like that, and it's going to be a big, well, huge you know, and, and that stuff's all, all kind of, you know, it, it irks you. But, I mean, there, I think that there's going to be bigger stuff happening. Because, you know, yeah. what was it this year? Was it Ukraine got their, their, their power grid hacked? Right. And, and I was saying, you Several know, big banks. instead of making our stuff more secure, they actually make it less secure. Because, like, right now the whole country is going gaga over the, uh, the automated... Um, meters for right. your electricity which are wi-fi enabled it's like hacking built in folks you right. know they're not making it harder for the hackers to get in they're like giving them a christmas right. here let me make it easy for you to hack the, right. the design grid. of technology the base item yeah that needs to be designed first is, is anti-hacking right. okay you're not but that's not what they're doing no. they're adding that in after the fact right. in most places it's like it's a software upgrade of some kind it's really crazy yeah you know and that that has to change. It has to have some hardware layers of protection before we get to the software layers for those kinds of things. Um, I wrote something in here was sort of a little weird. I talked about social terrorism, mm -hmm. um, and which has been on a big rise. Right. But I think it's going to actually go in the opposite direction, at least for a little while, because the five big social media players are actually getting together and saying that they're going to create a database of terrorists mm -hmm. and sort of blackball them. Mm -hmm. So that they can't create pages and posts and all that other kind of stuff. Yeah, because they're raising money through these uh, right. social nets. Right. So and raising recruits. Right. Too, they're raising worse. money, raising recruits, and they're actually sending messages to each other for mm -hmm. for operations and all that other kind of stuff. Along the same lines, though, once they start doing this in a coordinated effort, then they'll be a target for attack. Yeah. <laughs> because guess what? Terrorists have. Whole teams of ta hackers. Right. You know, always, I'm, I'm hearing on the r TV and radio about Russian hackers and Russia hacking. The reality is, Russia does not have a lot of hackers like the KGB. Well, not what? like the look at the Chinese. They right. have whole armies. No, of the hackers. Chinese have a division that right. does hacking. In Russia, what you have is a couple of dozen really damn good hackers, and they're out for hire to anybody, right. <laughs> including the Russian government. Right. I mean, that's the way it works in Russia. In the United States, we have hacking divisions. It's and called we the also, NSA, for those right. of you who do not know. <laughs> and we also have really good hackers mm -hmm. that are open for hire and yeah. that kind of stuff. And then they have the anarchist hackers. So we got plenty of anarchist type hackers here. Right. Germany has a bunch of anarchist type guys. The terrorists, they have, I mean, they're, they're jihadi hackers. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a, they're, they're um, what's the word I want to use for them? Um, it's part of the religion, if you will. They think they're they're going to go to heaven or something if right. they do this hacking stuff. So, hack way to right. through jihad, huh? right? It's a jihad <laughs> hacking type of thing. So, it, again, I think that the terrorist levels will go down on social media for a little while, mm -hmm. and that's going to prompt a big attack, right, by some of these guys. I wrote about social pornography, internet social pornography, because internet sites, social sites that are uh, risque at best, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, Friend Finder and so on. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of them was the biggest hack of this year. Yep. 400 million people or something yep. like that. Subscriptions were made public and so on. I really think that that's going to happen again. And because now they have social pornography sites. Right. Okay. And I'm sure one of the hackers are going to go after one of those places thinking, you know, I had to take a more hard ground or something like that. Well, again, it's a good way to, to start off. You know, you talk about uh, getting the ransomware and everything. Right. Why not? Hey, right. want, me to, want me to show your friends and family and, and coworkers, yeah. you, you know, all these pictures? The guy, the New York wiener. Hey, look what we got on yeah. you, guy. You know, that kind of stuff. So I figure that's going to happen in a big way. Pay-per-click will change, I think, a little bit in um, 2017. And the reason I say that is... We do a lot of pay-per-click for clients right. in here. And but one of the things we see a big trend is, you see Google keep jacking up the price on pay-per-click. I mean, some of the ones I'm monitoring, I'm not doing anything, and the, the bid price goes up two cents almost every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, almost like clockwork. Right. It's crazy. How can it go up two cents every day? Well, Google's making a hell of a lot of money. If you look at their cash right. flow, it's coming a lot from the pay-per-click arena. Um, and 
what's what the reason I'm saying I think that the landscape is going to change is because a lot of times I'll do du dual campaigns, right? Pay, you know, yep. AdWords and right. Facebook, absolutely. And in many cases, the same type of campaign on Facebook will yield four clicks to one mm -hmm. at one fourth the price, right? <laughs> I mean, that's a big difference. And when people start discovering that, that's going to start moving moving people away from AdWords mm -hmm. to Facebook. And on top of that, if Facebook gets their head out of there somewhere, <laughs> you know, and starts providing useful support for right. businesses, that's the problem. Right. then you it's really going to take off. Not, Google, if you have a problem, with a phone call right. somebody on Facebook, you're, you're in the dark. Right. There's nobody to call. There's nobody to Nobody's call. Home. And a lot of times you write them and they don't even write you back. You write them five times and you don't hear anything from them. But if they get that support piece turned around, Google's going to, I mean, Facebook's going to be the bomb and Google's going to be scratching their head like, what happened? Yeah. So I, I predict that'll happen. Uh, organic search obviously is going to change. Uh, it's getting more and more complex. Google is doing that on purpose. Why? Because it drives people to pay per click. Mm -hmm. Because if you can't get on page one and you can't get found and you want to be found, you got to right. be paid to be found. And that's one of the reasons Google's making a ton of money. Uh, I think that'll change because as as Facebook's world gets bigger, their universe will become sort of like Google. Right, get smaller. I mean, they got a billion and a half people. Yeah. If they if they open up China, which is one of the things I'm going to talk about last, they won't be a billion and a half people. Mm -hmm. They'll be three billion. Right. Like that. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's that's another thing that's going to happen. You'll see a lot of that kind of stuff going on. Um, what do you think about the media shift? I mean, we've been watching this for a while. I mean. A couple of years ago, we were talking about newspapers taking a dive, and well, I mean, I mean, the thing is, is that they have to get you know current with the times. And in fact, I, I see because of the fact that today, look, look what's going on with the cable companies. I mean, they're not the monopoly they once right. were. You can go around them in a number of different ways, and I, I see that continuing to grow more and more. And people are glad, but because again, yeah. you know, you're tired of having some fiefdom hold hold your media over your head where you're paying hundreds of dollars for something that you can pretty much get for free online. Well, not only that, there's another issue in that the government tries to heavily regulate. Cable companies like a utility, right? And that means that the cable company can't sell you a la carte, right? They have to sell you bundles and all this other kind of stuff. I'm sure it breaks their heart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but the reality is now you want HBO, mm -hmm. ten bucks a month. Mm -hmm. Okay, you you go directly with HBO or right. Cinemax or Stars or whoever. Yeah, because when you get the bundles, you're getting a lot of crap channels that right. you're never going to watch. Right. You know, as part of the package. Right. You have Netflix, obviously. Now Netflix is even doing a deal where you can like download the movie yep, and take it absolutely. with you, that kind of deal. So all those things are going to put major pressure yep. on the media companies, which are being actually relatively slow because they're giants. I mean, they can't right. move fast. And because they can't move fast, they're going to take it in the chin. Mm -hmm. They're no longer going to be the dominant right. you know, element. And when you look at people like Twitter and Facebook, which are actually moving into mm -hmm. that arena, mm -hmm. they're going to move into it hard and they have cash. Mm -hmm. And a lot of opportunities there for entrepreneurs to really come right. up with their own stuff. I mean, so that's going to be a really big deal. Um, I've talked about Twitter many years in a row, and that's usually one of the places where I've missed. Because I've been saying somebody's going to buy them for like three years. Nobody's bought them yet. And part of it is because they're, they're not profitable. Right. They're going to be making good money before I'm going to buy them, right? Right. Or anybody's going to buy them. Well, I think... They're going to make money this year. And the reason I say I think they're going to make money this year is, one, they're doing some things that are innovative, like they're broadcasting football games on the Twitter mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And they can sell advertising and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff on the side. But you also have the president-elect using Twitter to right. bypass the, the media. media. <laughs> yeah, that's his end around. Okay? And that gives Twitter a huge amount of credibility, not that they haven't always had a lot of credibility, because the media... The news media has always loved Twitter. Sure. But who's, nobody's bought them. Well, what I think is going to happen is NBC, ABC, CBS, or one of these big stations that got their head up their butt, they're going to take that cash that they have, mm -hmm. and they're going to buy Twitter. That's what I think is going to happen. I mean, I was saying, you know, Microsoft's going to buy Twitter, but they, they, they shot theirs and bought LinkedIn. Right. Okay? They had the right idea. Yeah. I guess LinkedIn was a better buy. Well, it, LinkedIn is more business, you know, oriented, and, it, and I think they're going to do some cool stuff with LinkedIn. So, um, you know, software has been sort of software for the last ten years. You don't see a lot of. I mean, when you look at use Word, hmm. not a lot of innovation and stuff like that. It's just Word is Word. Hmm. I mean, the, the grammar checker is better and that kind of stuff, but it hasn't really made any kind of leap. Quantum leap, yeah. yeah. 
I think the quantum leap is people are going to be starting adding artificial intelligence to applications as a normal piece. Because if you look at uh, voice recognition, mm -hmm. it's actually very, very good for a lot of things right now. So right. if you use Google, uh, Google Now or whatever, Google, OK Google, it actually understands somebody who's really nasally like me right. fairly well. And I'm a really good test. Because, I mean, I mean, I remember the early days back in the 80s because voice recognition has been around for a pretty oh, yeah. long time. I had to train my machine for two or three hours, and I was still only at 80% recognition. Mm -hmm. Today, 90% of the time, the Alexa Echo understands what I say. It may not understand what my question was, right. but it understood what I said. And same way with Google Voice, or I mean Google, OK Google. It usually gets it a lot of times. Cortana, Cortana, however you want to say it, gets it most of the time. They're going to start incorporating that stuff mm -hmm. into the applications. Oh, right now, they're in the OSs. Well, and you see it's popping up in all kinds of devices and right. appliances and everything, so it's just a matter of time before it starts going in the application. In fact, you know, you've also got, uh, what was it, um, was the one that won Jeopardy? Oh, uh, Watson. Watson, yeah, because, I mean, they've, they've been using, you know, Watson is open source now. Yeah. And they've been using him for, you know, medical diagnostics and everything else, but I think sooner or later he'll start creeping into a lot of these things, And too. We, we wrote an article not too long ago about artificial intelligence yeah. anyway, and in there, there was a, the guy who created Siri right. has created a next-generation product that what that does is actually writes code for you. Mm -hmm. So you tell it what you want, and it actually goes out and writes wow. it. Wow. Okay. And that's oh, he's going to sell that as an open source type of uh, mm -hmm. developmental engine. So that's going to be, be That'll cool definitely thing. be a game changer. Yeah, it's going to be a big game changer. So if you're a really good programmer and you're into scripting and all that kind of stuff, guess what? You may be replaced here in the next couple of years. Yeah. Well, I mean, you see <laughs> what's going on with cab drivers, like you know, right now with Uber. I mean, right. they basically want to get the cab driver out of the cab. Yeah. And they're doing it like Pittsburgh right now. They've got they've got their fleet of, of self driving cabs up there. So you know what are we what are we going to do as humans? I mean, if we if the it, you don't have to worry about Terminator. Right. It's not going to come and kill us. It's just going to take your job. Right. It'll starve you <laughs> to death. It's going to kill you, but slow. It's going to take a while. It'll turn us into batteries. That's it. Oh, that's the other movie. That's yeah. <laughs> um, so added features that AI is going to be a big deal in software. Um, one of the things you'll see, uh, you know, the medical industry has all kinds of devices and right. stuff like that. And you're going to see some serious consolidation because I really think that this year is going to be the... Uh, Internet of uh, Things yep. for, for health technology. Because yeah. one of the things, that, you know, the people have the Fitbits and all these kinds of things. Those devices are not as accurate yeah. as the medical industry needs. But there are devices that are being made well, it'll, for the it'll medical get there. Yeah. It'll get there. You know, in fact, the funny thing is one of the things you'll see on World Wide Weird today is, is they now have the, the health trackers for animals. In fact, mm -hmm. there's a company called Fitbark. Yeah, <laughs> it's coming up with these things for dogs. Well, I also, I remember we went to uh, OneSpark not too long ago, yeah. and they, they had this device that was really like a tricorder almost. Right. It was a sort of a big one. But it could measure your heart rate and temperature and, and a whole bunch of other room. stuff without touching you. Yeah, well they did that mostly because they were using it for applications right. in zoos where right. you don't you know you don't want to oh, get near the lion necessarily to, you know, figure out what what, what his respiratory problem is. Right. Or, or that is. cobra. Let's yeah. get, let's go measure what the cobra yeah. has. Right. Say ah uh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so these medical <laughs> devices there's a lot of consolidation going on. Yeah. And I went and did some research after I wrote this piece, uh, and you'll see that there's a lot of consolidation going on. So if you go to the notes page, you'll see some right. of those articles in there. Um, but I also think that this will be the year that companies are going to be coming out with some really cool devices for your home so that your doc doesn't have, you know, you don't have to go into the doc. Mm -hmm. He can, you know, go on teleport. your screen and you right. teleport in there and say, yeah, your blood pressure's this, mm -hmm. your heart rate's this, your blood oxygen is X, Y, Z. Right. You're, they prick your finger and get blood stuff on you and then sends the information. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, technology's there. Yeah, the technology's there and the price will be low enough where a, a person who doesn't really want to travel can right. do a lot of that stuff right Absolutely. out of the home. So, so watch to see that. consolidated devices right. that just do a bunch of this stuff all in one. Along those same lines, health trackers, right. I think, are going to slow in sales. Yeah. And the reason I think that it's real simple. The big market is the U.S. for the most part. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, around the world, people don't use health trackers. They use their phone. Okay? And in the United States, the saturation point is getting pretty close. Right. Fitbit's sales have slowed. They have, they're still growing, but they've slowed. Yeah. And the reason they slowed is a lot of the cool stuff that you want the Fitbit for in the first place, you can get with your phone. 
If you take your phone and, and load the Google app or whatever, you walk and it tracks your walking and distance with sure. GPS and all that kind of stuff. It can't track your heart rate, but if you put a heart rate monitor on, it would track your heart rate and so on. So you see that changing. And to me, the real giveaway is Fitbit is looking to buy other companies. Mm -hmm. so they bought a couple of companies. They bought Pebble. Right. So they think the watch thing is going to still go along. They want to stay competitive with the watch, but they're looking to buy other companies to get into the Internet of Things healthcare stuff. They want to get into the healthcare, healthcare with accuracy and all sure. that kind of thing. And I'm sure that they're going to do that. So here's a, here's a no-brainer one also. I thought, you know, Internet security companies are going to boom this year. Now, why would that be? Because they're going to be a hack fest. Yeah, everybody's <laughs> going to get hacked. Everybody's being hacked. I mean, I check my stuff regularly, and I always find all kinds of malware you know, that gets in there. And I'm really cautious all the time. Mm -hmm. So if I'm being hacked and I got four layers of defense on my mm -hmm. computer running, which is why I catch a lot of this stuff, yeah. people are going to be hacked. And guess what? Businesses can't afford to be hacked. Right. Banks can't afford to be hacked. The government obviously can be hacked because it's not their money. They don't care. Right. Okay. But the, the companies who make these products are going to be booming because, again, there's no other choice. Um, and the last one that I had on there was I think there's going to be a big change in the position of the leaders, although Facebook is not going to change from the lead position. What they're going to do is they're going to expand their lead position mm -hmm. by leaps and bounds because right. they want to get into China. If they come up with some kind of deal to get into China because they're already saying, yeah, we'll let you censor stuff, mm -hmm. boom, they'll get in there. And uh, how many people in China? Yeah, <laughs> Three billion, whatever, <laughs> boom. Facebook doubles in size, triples in size in a very short period of time. Um, and I also think Microsoft's going to make some cool things happen with LinkedIn. Sure. You know, they're going to start bundling LinkedIn capabilities into Word or whatever. Well, that's what they always do. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's why... how they destroyed Netscape. Yeah. The, net, the, 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 they attack them from behind, mm -hmm. if you will. So, I know we're about five minutes left in the show, four minutes left in the show. We want to get to the worldwide <laughs> where. <laughs> Well, you know, it, it's not going to be just uh, wearables for people. Now, now they're making wearables for animals. And you I know, like the people, picture that they have. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing is, is that people spend more on their animals sometimes than they do on their children. Yeah. And and now you're going to have all the electronic toys. And there was some pretty cool ones. I told you there's a company called Fitbark, which I kind of I kind of thought was cool. And what they're doing is they're coming up with a wireless activity monitor that can track activity levels, naps, daily progress, enables you to see and share this data with friends and family, your vet. And it even shows their progress and versus you yours. Can, you can see it on your phone. And yeah. then when you see they're just sleeping too much, you remotely turn the TV on so they yeah. can watch their favorite show. Well, they have that too. You know, I mean, they've got all kinds of things that they've got for these right, for these animals right now. I mean, some of them look just like the things that we right. wear, but just, you know, bigger, like they're scaled up to their dog. Well, I was just telling you that my wife, I have a dog, and, he, yeah. and he's had both knees operated yeah. on. And the left knee never quite healed right. Right. So he, he runs around three legs for the most part. Yeah. Well, my wife said, you know, we want to get some kind of doggy wheelchair -y thing for him. Yeah. Your skateboard that he could lay on and do like that. Yeah, paddle around. Yeah. And guess what? On oh, Walmart, Walmart them. sells. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, that was pretty wild. Yeah. But, you know, the thing is, is that the one thing that the animals haven't figured out to do yet, to go in the stores and shop on their own, except for this one beaver, <laughs> in Maryland that decided it wanted to browse the aisles of the dollar store. It's like, okay, if you're not going to buy me what I want, damn it, I'm going to go get it for myself. Let me exchange this. He went in there and found a couple of oars or something to chew Well, actually, on. they said, yeah, he was pulling stuff down out of the, out of the, off the shelves. He's like, yeah, okay, I'll have one of these, you know. And, and then, you know, and then, and then because of the fact that, of course, beavers have children, you know, little, little beavers, there was one that they found at the uh, D.C. Metro station that was paddling around in the in the uh, the fountain, and now he's on somebody's leg here. Well, I was a kid, you know. They said that it was kind of a friendly little baby baby beaver, and, and somebody some kid put his shoe up there and crawled up on top of the kid's shoe. He just probably wanted to be warm. He wanted to be warm. Well, I just think you know he's looking for his mom. I mean, that was a real little one. Yeah, that's and you know I think that's what mom did. She figured you know it's like they don't have nannies for beavers. Like, I'll just leave them over here with these people. They'll take care of them. And you got the little it's like the mall. You know, you got the little pond in the mall. Right. You know, it's sitting there in the pond. And then my, my favorite one, though, was the last one. Well, this isn't something that you definitely the want Capibari, to see. The Capybara, the Yeah, which is one. Yeah, it's like a giant rat. Right. And, and there were one of them called Bonnie and one of them called Clyde. You know what Bonnie and Clyde did, right? Yeah. They escaped from the, the High Park Zoo in Toronto. 
<laughs> at least, it, hopefully, it was in the in the summertime. <laughs> well, you know, Kevin Barrett, they'll, they'll come around yeah, anytime. Yeah, I, just, I seen him when I lived when I used to live in um, uh, what is, uh, New Orleans. I saw the Nutria, which are kind of right, a relative of right. theirs. Hell, we had a Nutria in my lake. Yeah, well, and he disappeared. I don't know whether the somebody, one of the neighbors, ate him or something like that, but he disappeared. But Nutrias have been invading Florida, actually, because yeah. they're not really from here. Right, like, yeah, no, they're the capybara, but they, they do really well. Right. I know at the zoo they have three or four of them. They're not pretty wild. They're yeah. a big monster rat. They have, I understand they make pretty good pets. 60-pound rat. Oh, well, I'm sure they're smart. I mean, they're yeah. probably related to pigs or something like that. You know, um, we're right at the end of the show here, I want to make sure that I tell the, the listeners, if you want more prediction articles, I've got a bunch of them on the, the um, blog, Go to the notes page, you'll find a bunch of them there. For our Club WQ members, go to the Dropbox. There's a whole bunch of stuff in there that you'll find really cool. Uh, next week's show is going to be the physics of marketing. How physics relates to, you know, the laws of marketing in the 21st century. So it'll be sort of a fun show. Yeah, and be charitable when you see those beavers shopping in the in the store. You know, help reach stuff on the top shelf. <laughs> they, they have really short little legs. <laughs>